Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about tying the functional sagio knot as well as sealing the sword. So the nice thing about removing the ceremonial knot is you actually don't need any tools to do so, right? So it's actually rather easy, which is why this is kind of like a two-parter where I'm actually going to show you how to uh, seal the sword as well. Um, but so, for example, we have this happy little knot, right? Again, if you have this beautiful two-tone, it kind of adds a little bit of, you know, that flex. So again, the, the removal of this is actually super, almost excessively easy. In fact, people usually do it by accident. All you're gonna to need to do, if you wanna be, you know, elegant, uh, notice that we have the, the bow and then the, the tapered end at both ends. All you're gonna do is pull the tapered ends and it's gonna come out. Again, not like super cinematic or anything like that, but I do wanna show you how to make that functional knot as well. So all you're gonna do, I'll try to, sorry, uh, I'll try to prop you up a little bit so you can kind of see what's up. All you're gonna do is pull these gentlemen out, again, as gently as you can so you don't annoy your sword, and you're gonna notice it's gonna nice, <laughs> it's gonna be nice and gentle as we do so. So once these are out, you can tell when it's you know, fully out. Uh, I kind of like to do one of these guys because it makes it look kind of more fun. You can kind of like pull it out this way and notice that it all naturally comes undone. So for fun, uh, because fun, uh, this actual portion, so each of these portions, also what you do to uh, fasten uh, the sagio to your hip. But once again, you can just, literally all you need to do is just keep pulling these and it's gonna naturally come out like so. So that is how you undo the knot. Again, undoing a knot is usually the easier aspect, especially for these uh, slip knots, right? Which I am assuming that's what they're called. Um, so let's actually talk about the other aspect, right? So we want to also uh, tie a more functional knot as well. So all we want to do, so from here, is we want to make sure this is in the direct center, right? So again, this is not you know rocket science per se, um, but all you want to do is gather up your sageo. I usually start at the opposite end, but I also want these to be nice and flat, right? So make sure they are even, and try to make sure they maintain even as you pull them through. And then as it gets here, kind of like make sure everything's even, seems to be. So, yeah, so at this point, I like to pinch, right? So kind of maintain that halfway point. Um, and then all we're gonna do is you're gonna bring, uh, <laughs> I usually don't do the seated, so this should be interesting. All you're gonna do is bring this over, right? So, so behind, the fingers, again, trying to maintain uh, both of the uh, strings together. And you're gonna be feeding this through this way. Now, unlike a slip knot, this is not gonna be a slip knot. You're just gonna pull this guy out. And all you're gonna do is pull. So I know this is not like the most <laughs> um, complicated knot. Um, however, this is how you make that, make that knot, right? So, now, if you have a two-tone, you can also kind of think about like which color you want out, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm rather fond of having brown out because it kind of goes with the, the brown here. And also it just, blue is very fancy looking. So I like the, the brown a little bit more. Um, so you can just gather that up. And then this is how you would just carry the sageo. Now, I also mentioned, I want to show you how to seal the sword as well, right? Um, now, this is what I use to uh, transport my sword all of the time, right? So when even when it's uh, here, um, because sometimes I switch my jingun out for uh, my practice sword. Um, so this is really good for making sure it doesn't, like again, it doesn't slip out or anything like that, uh, especially during transport. The securing knot is also a nice way to, again, make, make your sword feel more secure, right? Um, because again, if you have a ceremony knot, sort of like what we have with our jingun, it can easily fall out. This uh, shows a little more respect to the weapon, in my opinion. Um, even if the knot itself sort of looks a little bit spider webby. Um, now, this knot was not taught not taught to me um, by anyone in particular that I know of. Uh, this is kind of like my own, I guess, homebrew of how to tie this. Uh, but let's take a look, right? 
So what we're going to do, I'm going to try to keep you nice and even. I'm going to bring the sage up on angle. I'm hoping, hoping all this is in frame. It is barely in frame. So a little more forward. Uh, bring it up. Oops. Again, I'm usually standing when I do this. This is a little bit awkward for me, but we'll, we'll make do, right? So from here, I'm going to wrap it around all the way. Right, so securing it in, making sure it's tense all the way. I'm going to loop it below the knot. And it'll pull it through. So we're here. So noticing now that that's pretty secure. I'm going to bring it back around the way it came. Go underneath uh, the knot here, or the, the node here. And really just like gather up the, the knot as you go. Or not the knot, gather up the, the slack as you go until you have a decent amount left like so. And I like to, at this point, I'm gonna put you down here. I like to have a slip knot here without letting this get loose. So I usually pull up a little bit, pull this through, and then just like tighten as we go. So again, I'm gonna tighten by pulling the one that's not near the loop or near the, the tail here. So. And that's it. So this is how I usually have my sword for transport. Notice that even if I push on it, it's not gonna unleash. Um, I can pull upside down. Uh, so this is a really good way to travel with your sword uh, so that it's secure. It's also more, in my opinion, respectful to the weapon because it's showing that, you know, I'm not gonna <laughs> yank you from your place of peace. It gives it a little more security. Um, yeah, so this is the way uh, I like to secure my weapon. So, here's that. Now you might be wondering, okay, how do I get out of that, right? So, because it's a slip knot, all I'm gonna do is pull. And again, you can do the little fancy pull down thing. I just kind of like naturally just unwind it this way, right? Feed it through. I like to pull from up here to pull it through. Do a few of these guys. And then your sword is released. At this point, I would also gather up the sageo, put it, you know, secure it with my thumb, make sure the proportions are right underneath. And then this is our uh, now unknotted sword. And that's how you make the functional knot, as well as doing a more spider webby way of making sure uh, the sword doesn't come loose mid travel. Um, I'm also going to do it just standing because this is just how I normally do it. It's going to look a little more natural doing it this way. Um, but also as I'm <laughs> doing my conclusion, I'll do that, right? Um, so as you can probably tell, uh, this is how I almost always wear my sword. I almost always have it in the functional knot. It's just the way I kind of roll that way. Um, but, right, so obviously um, because we are from Dosa, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer and just see how I can kind of do so more natural speed. Um, right, so this is a really good way to, again, make sure uh, your sword is nice and safe as you travel. Uh, it doesn't look as crazy <laughs> as it potentially might look initially once you kind of get used to it. Um, but again, this is a nice way to make sure your sword is safe and uh, more, more snug in at home. Um, so that is a nice way to kind of make sure everything's safe for travel. Again, you don't do this with your sword, uh, but obviously it is a much more secure uh, position now. Um, but with that, uh, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training. I don't.